and the headlines. Artisans, business operators lament nationwide blackout effects of strike on livelihood. Yobe doctors defy organized labor strike directive attend to patients. Nigeria Deposits Insurance Corporation commence liquidation of Heritage Bank. And on the foreign scene, Claudia Shenbaum elected as Mexico's first female president. Hello, welcome to News Updates on Trust TV. I am Lilian Ogazi. Now to the details of the news. Business operators and artisans in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, are struggling with the consequences of the electricity blackout caused by the nationwide indefinite industrial action by labor unions. Amidst the agitation for a new minimum wage, electricity workers have shut down the national grid, cutting power supply across the country. Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail speaks with artisans and business operators in Abuja about the impact of the power cut on their businesses and the broader economy. The nationwide strike, which took effect at midnight of June 3rd, is already taking a toll on businesses. The recent power cut has only compounded the situation. Artisans and business operators are now compelled to rely on gasoline power generators to remain operational as labor unions continue to enforce the strike. Normally our work, we used to use um, light before we do our work. So as far as now, um, electricity go for strike, really we are facing, facing many challenges because we have to buy for a um, huge generator to operate and it's no small expense that we used to spend. So the thing is really affecting us. Governments um, need to do the needed. Even when they have not cut it, if they bring it, it won't take more than two hours they will take it back so all our days operating with this company or operating with this very things that we are doing here we are using this in a uh, uh, generator more than 50,000 every day just times it like one week just to buy fuel and end of the day we are recharging you will recharge maybe 30 40,000 or 50 and that recharge that you recharge will be there to more than three months because there's no light as these artisans struggle with the high cost of production due to the power cuts, other businesses face low customer turnout because of the industrial action. This presents an unprecedented challenge to the growth and sustainability of their operations. So most of our clients now, they will not even know that they have taken the light for like some period of time now. And work is slowly. And it is really, really affecting us that are individual entrepreneurs, not like those people that are working in government, like uh, that are salary and at the end of the, at the end of the month they will still get their salary. If the strike by labor continue, it's going to really, really affect our business. And what I'm urging government is for government to meet the demand of labor. It's very obvious. On a normal day, if you come here, people trooping here, buying, going out, going, coming in to buy and you know, to their various uh, homes and their offices. But you can see everywhere is very quiet. No light, we power assistance with, uh, with the, with the, with the NEPA, or what do you call it, uh, power holding. But you can see all our systems are shut down, except where you get a uh, generator. If you have a generator and the noises, uh, the pollution from the noises is even very, very, very dangerous. The fuel uh, is very expensive. If you say you can run your office with generator, you can see how much it costs the foil is it's very very high as the strike continues nigerians will witness disruptions of essential services while struggling to survive the harsh economic hardship in the country on sunday the national assembly failed to convince the organized labor to call off the planned industrial action emmet pressing the federal government to review the national minimum wage upward ibrahim ismail Trust TV News, Abuja. 
Meanwhile, local artisans and operators of grinding machines in Kaduna are facing significant disruptions in their activities due to the indefinite strike initiated by the organized labor union in Nigeria. They express concerns about the difficulties and they're encountering as a result of the strike, highlighting the uncertainty it brings to their livelihoods. Trust TV's Bello Musa has a situation report. Residents of Kaduna are feeling the impact of the strike as activities at banks and other financial institutions in the metropolis have come to a standstill. Previously, bustling areas such as those housing local grinders now lie dormant without electricity due to the strike. We are the most hit by this strike because we can't operate without a power. It has disrupted our operations. We are not happy with the strike, and the only thing that will make me happy now is to see power supply restored. Traders and other residents are also lamenting that the strike is already biting on them. It affects me very well. Because by now, I was supposed to be at home, resting. But the place is scanty. I don't, I don't even see some of my customers still today. So yeah, it affects me. Ah, like me, it affected me. I had issue to receive money from um, UBA today. And I was already in the banking premises when these labor people came and um, they disperse everybody, including the staffs. The ones on this Yakubu go one way here. They have to drive all the staffs out, including the customers. So it really affected me. Like me now, I'm supposed to do some transactions today. I've not been able to do According to them, if the strike continues, it will result to untold hardship. We don't want it to continue or else we will suffer the most due to supply cuts. It, it will not be easy, honestly, it will not be easy, honestly. Because just look at today is the first day. Look at how everywhere is cancer, not to talk of when it's continuing. Government should shift a bit. At least labor, labor, well, labor too should shift. Let them have a common ground so that the masses will not suffer because this thing is affecting almost everybody. Yes, sir, that is, why, that, is why, that is why all of them need to go out. Yeah. The labor union leaders in Kaduna while commenting say the industrial action is to protect the interest of workers and the general public. We are ready and prepared to fight the cause to the later because it's as if the government does not have good political will. The minimum wage that we are looking for is not something that is just by the way. It's a matter of necessity and a right. We feel after five or six years of minimum wage, there is nothing in this country that has not risen over 200 percent. It's only the salary that is remaining as it were. The strike disrupted examinations at Kaduna Polytechnic. While students and staff of Kaduna State University were stranded outside the school premises, unable to access the campus. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Now back to the FCT, where staff of various federal ministries based at the Federal Secretariat in Abuja arrived on Monday, June 3rd, to find the entrances of their offices locked. Civil servants who attempted to resume work despite the NLC's announcements were turned away and sent home. Some were accused of being saboteurs of Labour's collective action. Trust TV's Sagir Ibrahim has more on this. Why are you sabotaging? Why? Do you want 
Another development at the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs as members of the Nigeria Labour Congress have arrived at the premises to fish out civil servants who attended work today. The members of the organized labor who patrolled the entire vicinity of the federal secretariat say that they were doing so to fish out moles as they were determined to ensure full compliance of the directive. Elsewhere, air travelers intending to board their various flights to different destinations were also shocked on Monday morning when they arrived to a locked departure hall at the Namdi Aziku International Airport, Abuja. Operations at the airport, just as was also observed at the Federal Secretariat, was shut down following the directive of the Nigeria Labour Congress to its various organs and affiliates to down tools due to the inability of the union and the federal government to reach a compromise. While compliance at the airport was observed to be absolute, travellers lamented waiting upwards of six hours, all in the hopes of flying out of Abuja. However, their hopes were dashed after airport officials informed them that operations at the airport had been suspended. It's so disheartening. To me, it's, it came as a shock because I didn't plan for it. My plan was that landing here this morning from China, I'll just board another flight to Lagos, only for me to hear that the Nigerian Labour Congress is embarking on strike together. It started, it started this morning. I am livid, and livid is the is the nice word word i can use i am i am very angry at not only at nlc i'm actually angry with the leadership of this country um this is ridiculous uh i am stranded in abuja airport um there is no hope of us getting back to lagos today and i say this categorically that this is not fair um airport is closed power down this is so unfair. When do we want to get out of this nonsense? I'm supposed to be going to worry. And a lot of inconvenience because I had my plans for today that I was supposed to go and be doing. Now I cannot get there. I don't even know when I'll be able to get there. My frustration is the fact that they didn't even communicate to passengers. Don't come to the airport and get stranded. That is my only frustration. So I hope they will do better. I hope they can resolve this thing today because there are people having things to do who did not plan for this. I came to the airport around 7.30. Nobody has said anything. And we've been waiting for either email from our service providers. We've not received any. So we've been here just hoping that somebody can say something or send an email so that we know whether to go home or to stay back if this strike would be called off for us to travel. Nothing. It is, um, I can't even quantify it. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm be, it's, it's way beyond what I can even express. All I can say is it's not good and it's not fair for us to be treated like this. At least someone has to come out and um, to inform us on what to do, whether to stay or to go home. So we're just hanging around. For some of these travelers, it's been hours upon hours of endless waiting waiting for a time when they hope that the doors will be open and access to their different airlines will be granted to them for them to travel to the different locations across nigeria to do the businesses but for now they would have to wait until the leadership of the nlc gives signal to the men who have now manned this door to ensure that the industrial action is complied with 100 percent from the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, Sagir Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Now moving over to Yobe State, where the Yobe State chapter of the Nigerian Medical Association has chosen not to adhere to the directives of the Nigerian Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress regarding the indefinite strike action. NMA Chairman in Yobe State, Abubakar Kaumi Mala, clarified to journalists in Damaturu that NMA is not affiliated with NLC or TUC and therefore cannot participate in the nationwide strike. He emphasized that all members have been instructed to continue their routine work attending to patients who require medical attention. Kumi Mala assured that doctors and other health workers are fully operational and the healthcare system remains open and accessible to the public. 
Reports from hospitals and clinics across Damatru, the state capital confirmed that staff, including nurses and other healthcare workers, are present and attending to patients. Meanwhile, the presidency has expressed concerns that meeting the organized labor's demand for a minimum wage of 494,000 naira would severely harm Nigeria's economy. And during Galale, the presidential spokesperson highlighted on TVC's politics that yielding to labor's demand would have detrimental consequences for the country's interests. The Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress, TUC, initiated an indefinite nationwide strike due to the federal government's refusal to accept the minimum wage while labor is pushing for 494,000, the federal government offered 60,000 naira. Ngalale warned that if the government and the organized private sector were to meet labor's demand, many small businesses would be forced to close. This is news updates coming to you from Trust TV. Coming up. Receding water level signposts 12 times ahead for local fishermen in Kastana. More news when we return this day. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is news update coming to you from Trust TV. Let's take a look at our headline stories again. Artisans, business operators lament nationwide blackout effects of strike on livelihood. Yobe doctors defy organized labor strike directive, attend to patients. Now moving on, Anjua Dam in Katsina was once a vibrant source of life. Now it faces a heartbreaking struggle. The climbing water levels threaten not just the ecosystem, but the very way of life for generations of fishermen. Jamil Mabai reports on the declining water levels and how it threatens decades of long businesses. Ajiwa Dam in Kasena, Nigeria was once a source of life, teeming with fish and supported generations of families. Today, it is a heartbreaking reminder of a changing climate, spelled disaster for the local fishermen whose way of life is under threat. Back then, we enjoyed fishing, but now we are suffering. That place used to be deep water, but now desert has encroached. Because of the global warming, we can't find any fish. We are confused as to what happened to the fish. I catch more than 100 fish before, but now I only catch 5 to 10. Idris, like many here, inherited his trade from his father. What they see as a mystery Experts point to a harsh reality, climate change. When plastic waste finds its way into the dam, like Ajiwa Dam, it breaks down into debris and gets eaten by the fish. And when they eat it, it causes injection and further prevent them from eating. As a result of that, they die. The impact is undeniable. Families who once thrived on the bounty of the dam now struggle to put food on the table. We can't buy chicken or eat unless you combine it with farming. The human cost is devastating, income has plummeted, and food insecurity is a growing concern. For now, the future of Ajiwa Dam and the lives it sustains hangs in the balance. Jamila Mobay, Trust TV, Kasana. 
The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation has initiated the liquidation process of Harris H Bank PLC following the revocation of its banking license by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Immediate verification and payment of insured deposits to bank depositors have begun. Depositors with alternate accounts within the industry will be paid up to the insured amount of $5 million per depositor using the bank verification number to locate their alternate accounts. For depositors without alternate accounts, they are advised to visit the nearest branch of the bank with proof of account ownership and verifiable means of identification to verify the deposits and receive payment alternatively. They can file an online claim through the NDIC website. Creditors are also encouraged to file their claims either at the bank branch or through the online platform. Payments to creditors will commence after all depositors have been paid. Debtors who have outstanding loans are advised to contact the NDIC's asset management department for further assistance. The NDIC reassures the public of its commitment to safeguarding depositors' funds in all licensed banks, emphasizing that banks whose licenses have not been revoked remain safe and sound. And on the foreign scene, Mexico is poised to make history with Claudia Sheinbaum projected to become the country's first female president in its 200-year history. The climate scientist and former Mexico City mayor secured victory as her competitors considered defeats. Now, according to the National Electoral Institute, Sheinbaum garnered between 58.3% and 60.7% of the vote, a significant lead over her rivals, Sochil Gavas and Jorge Alvarez, she campaigned on continuing the political path set by President Andres Manuel Lopez, her political mentor. Despite a spirited challenge, Shemba maintained a commanding lead throughout the campaign. She is known for her calm demeanor in times of crisis and comes from a background of Bulgarian and Lithuanian Jewish heritage. As she prepares to take office, she is expected to face a different political landscape than her predecessor with a diverse set of challenges ahead. And in sports, Chelsea have confirmed Enzo Marquesa has their new head coach, handing him a five-year contract with the option of a sixth in a massive show of faith. For Mauricio Pochettino's successor, the Italian will officially start work on July 1st, though he's already preparing for pre-season, having asked Chelsea's data room to provide performance analysis on every player from youth level to first team. The 44-year-old has also requested the information of each person with whom he will work with at Chelsea's training ground and has started rewatching matches from the 2023-2024 season under Pochettino while holidaying in Marabella. Leicester City are due a compensation package worth around £10 million after losing Marquesa as well as six of his backroom staff who will join him at Chelsea, as revealed by Mall Sport last week. Co-sporting directors Paul Winsterly and Lawrence Stewart led the search with the club's ownership, including Begdad Ebali, Jose E. Falsano, and Todd Bowley, voting unanimously in favor of Maresca. Maresca led Leicester back to the top flight at the first time of joining in summer 2023. With that, we've come to the end of news updates here on Trust TV. Do well to follow us across all our social media platforms for more news programs and documentaries. Thanks for watching. I am Lilian Ogazi.